Hello and welcome back. Welcome if you've never been here before. Welcome to Miss Fit. Start living and thriving now with me, Dr. Natalie Forrest. I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad you're here, whether you're new or you've been here before. Welcome back. Welcome to you as a new viewer. You've come to the right place for sure. Today I'm excited because we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects. Living, existing. Is there a difference? We'll talk about it in a minute. Before we get there though, I wanna just give a shout out to all of my guests thus far and to all the ones who are coming up because they are amazing and they'll have great insights to share with you. Some of them are my friends. Some of them have reached out because of the subject. And some are my fellow teachers, collaborators, and friends right here on Transformation TV. So if you've liked what you've seen so far on this show and from some of my guests, if you want to find out more about what we do on Transformation TV, all of us who've come together to help you, support you, and just be a resource for you so you can be all that you are meant to be right here right now then just jump over to the main site for transformation tv and check all of my colleagues out whatever your eye lands on is exactly what you'll need right now all right just wanted to give a big shout out about that and stay tuned for more episodes from me because I've got some good stuff coming up. As I said, though, today, I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects. And the subject is existing or living. Living or existing. Is there a difference? And if so, what is the difference? You see, it's one of my favorite subjects because I've researched it. I've written about it in a number of my books. I talk about it. And most of my speaking, as well as in most of my courses and consulting. Because unless we understand that, yes, there is a difference. Unless we understand that, I honestly don't think that we're ready to truly transform our lives. And I do know that my fellow teachers agree with me on that. I'm just the one right now, right here, voicing it. So when you walk down the street, are you doing so with presence of mind, with presence of heart, with presence of conscious awareness, or, and you've heard me use this term before, or are you on autopilot walking down the street? Maybe you're on the phone texting, because you don't really want to look around and see anybody. Maybe you're on the phone, I don't know how to hold it, talking because you don't really want to be spoken to. Maybe you're just looking down at your feet because you're worried about looking up. And in that, are you really living in that moment. A number of other transformational teachers, philosophers have talked about this before. And I wanna bring it home to you because I know that if you're here, you're most likely currently existing. And, and I've been there too, I've been there too. I mean, I had a goal years ago, like way back, I'm that old, way back when I had a goal. And I said, yeah, I want to get married. I want to be a good wife. And, and, and I did that. And in that experience, 
I shut down. I shut down emotionally. I shut down in so many different ways that I was on autopilot. There was no emotion when I was waking up, other than maybe being tired. There was no emotional charge of going to work or getting picked up by my husband, meeting my husband somewhere. The, the most emotional charge I got was when I was with my cat or walking down the street or down in a park and being by myself contemplating. And then very often I was so lost in contemplation that I didn't even see or experience what was happening around me. So many ways I had to retrain myself. And that has made all the difference. All the difference. You know, we all go through stages where society tells us what we should do, how we should do it, and, and we try and fit in, and, and we try to do it. And um, as, a, as a dear friend of mine says, you know, try is a very interesting word. It's a premeditated lie. And I'm borrowing that from Wendy Talese. If you want to look her up, please do so. It's a premeditated lie because as a, as a pastor, I was once dealing with also pointed out, if you try to do something, like try to lift up your phone, the minute you touch it and it's in the air, you're no longer trying, you're doing it. So try is really only the moment before you do or don't do something. And I love that because there are so many things we say we try and we don't really. And so existing to me is almost like a, I don't wanna say premeditated lie, but it's, it's an autopilot. It's like we're watching a movie. Are you watching a movie? When you're listening to me or to any of my fellow teachers or anybody else, are you engaged or are you sort of like listening in the background? Because it is about presence, isn't it? It's all about are you participating? If you've ever said, or felt, or agreed with somebody who said, life is happening to me all the time. Stop, stop right there. Because that is the key to you admitting you're existing. Life is not happening to me. I am living, I am participating in it. Life is not happening to me, it's happening with me. I'm part of my life every single step. Now that doesn't mean that you know you need to be on high highs and low lows and all of that. There, there's something about a little bit more of a moderation. I'm not necessarily one of the uh, philosophers who believes that you always have to be on the median. No emotions up, no emotions down. Because I do believe we're human beings having a human experience. And therefore, we do feel. I mean, there are mornings when I get up and I'm all excited, you know, that passion that you have, whoa, it's a new day. And there are mornings when the alarm clock rings and I'm like, oh, really? Is it time to get up yet? And it is. And then I start my own inner dialogue and I'm like, hey, what, what can you create today? How can you be present this day? How can you experience this day to the fullest? And once you get to that point, you begin or re-begin, if that is a term, living. Maybe it's better to say you begin living or you begin reliving. Reliving, of course, has a different connotation to it. 
So ask yourself, are you on autopilot? Or are you present in every moment? And no, this is not something that you wake up to one day and you change it. That's, that's not it. It's a work in progress, really. I mean, even today, there are some times when, when I drive and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, 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 did I just pass my exit? Now, most of the time that might be because I'm listening to meditation music or I'm having a great conversation and I want to be present in the conversation. And I am so present and so focused that I'm going to focus on what is happening in the conversation. I may not be turning my eyesight from the road, but my presence is over with the passenger in the back seat or in the front seat. So I want to be present for that conversation. And, and if I can't be present, by the way, I will say, please, not right now. Because I want to be present. If you're not present, what's the experience like? Sometimes I talk about the fact that if you believe life is happening to you, it's almost like you're a spectator. You're a spectator in a sports game. You're just a spectator. You got your ticket. Maybe you got your hot dog or your hamburger or your popcorn. Whichever country you're in right now, whatever the culture is there when you go to a sports game, right? You've got that. You get your cell phone, of course, because in between you got to have to have, take a selfie and show people where you're at because that's important in today's society. you got to have it on Facebook. You're on autopilot with all those things. And the game's going on down the air. You're watching. Everybody around you cheers. You're cheering. You may not know why. You may know why. So all that is happening out there, like on the football field, on a soccer field. And you're watching it. You're not feeling the excitement of the players down there. You're not feeling the excitement of being a part of the team, whether you're down there or part of the team here. You're just there because dot, dot, dot. And because never ends a sentence. So why are you there? In other words, when you go to the movies, I'm sure you've been to the movies. Or if you don't go to the movies, if you're watching a movie at home in front of the TV. You're living through the characters on that screen. And it's great, isn't it? I mean, sometimes I cry my heart out. But I cry my heart out because I'm with the movie. I'm present in the movie. Everything else around me, I shut out. I'm like part of it. Yes, sometimes I talk to the movie. But not much anymore. I'm almost like um, a silent participant. But when you laugh and when you, when you cry, you're participating. The movie is happening with you. If you're sitting there, you're eating your popcorn, you're eating your ice cream, again, whatever the culture is that you're in, and it's not like just going on there, it's just going on and going on. And at the end, when everybody gets up, you're looking around going, okay, what I miss? You were never part of the movie. So transfer that into your own life, if you will. How much are you a part of your own life? How much are you living your life? It's like my key thing. 
I literally, I want everybody to be able to live their life their way without regrets or apologies. That's like, that's what I want. Yes, there are some things we have to do wherever we live. There are some rules, there are some guidelines. Yes, we have to have an income most of the time to pay some bills. But that doesn't mean that that can serve as an excuse for not living. You can make your job part of your life. You can change how you walk into your job. You can change how you act on your job. See, the other day I was, um, I was doing a workshop. And I like, did this little experiment with them. Um, it, it wasn't really as much about the content as it was about how they would all act. It was a, it was a group activity. And, and I love doing the house. So if you ever come to a workshop of mine, you may end up in a situation like that. And um, they were doing their thing. And at the end of it, I, I had to look at them. And I said, you all just scared me. You all just really, really scared me. That was a young group. And they looked at me. They, they were obviously confused. And so they said, why? And I said, well, 80% of you were just sitting there. I could see in your faces that you knew some of the answers, and yet you didn't speak up once. Or were you just sitting there, just observing, not engaging? And, and it scared me because it showed me that they had taught themselves to be disengaged, to not take that one step, that one step to freedom where you express yourself with love, with kindness, but you express yourself and you claim and are who you are. They were just sitting there. In, in politics, we refer to that at, as the silent majority. But we have the silent majority in life. So I told them, I said, how you're acting here is how you act out there. If you don't speak your mind here, if you're not able to be you here in a, in a room where we all agreed on confidentiality, where we all agreed on this being a safe place, if you cannot speak your mind here, then, then where? They were existing. They were at the workshop. They had signed up for it. So clearly there was some kind of interest. And I could see it working in their brains, right? You see those little wheels turning. Oh, I love that. And yet, they were not taking the next step. They were just... It scared me. Because I felt sad for them. And that is on me. It's on me because people have a choice. And I respect the choice. There's nothing wrong with existing if that's what you choose to do. But you, you are here today because you want to live. You're tired of being a spectator. So you know that there's a difference between living and existing. And living and existing makes a difference in this world. It's funny how things work. You see, I, I was listening to a song by accident, a song that I had listened to years ago. You know, we go through these ebbs and flows like, oh, today I'm in the mood for this, tomorrow I'm in the mood for this. That's called living, by the way. You play the music that serves you that day, and, and you listen to it, you're present with it, maybe you dance a little bit, maybe you sing along, even if my voice should not be singing, I sometimes do sing along, because I'm present with the music. 
right? And this song is called Standing Outside the Fire. And I love that song. And in many ways, it prompted me to talk about this today. I've been planning on talking about living and existing, but there, there's this line in this song, and it's by Garth Brooks, Standing Outside the Fire. And it talks about how if you're standing outside the fire, like that burning fire inside, right? That's what we're talking about. You're not really living. And that's, that's really it in a nutshell, isn't it? Again, living doesn't mean you're always excited, passionate, and happy. I mean, I talk about that in business consultancy, right? Yes, we have that image, and some people will tell you that if you're living your passion, you will get up every morning, and you will go, woohoo! Yes, you will a lot of mornings. But then there are other mornings where you don't wake up, woohoo, where you wake up, like I said before, and you're just tired, or you don't really feel like it, or there's something else that just popped into your head. And that's okay because you've got to give your presence to that, but you've got to be present in that. So yes, there are times when, when I'm not elated and happy, when I might be reserved and in my mind, caught up in my mind. And that's, of course, when things start bubbling, right? It's like when ideas come up and you start making connections and you're going, ooh, where does this fit in? And my brain works in mysterious ways where I've got all these things happening and then boom, it comes out. So if I want the idea to come to fruition, I need to let it germinate in my brain. I need to give my brain and my emotions and my intuition and my insights, I, I need to give all of that collaborative movement the time it deserves. And I need to be present with that. I need to focus my presence on what's happening in my brain. And then sometimes I need to step away from what is happening here because it still needs to germinate. Sometimes it takes a while, so it still needs to germinate. So I know I gotta get my presence away from that. That's over here. Great, stay there. And then I go over here and I'm present with something else. So everything I do, I experience because I'm living it. High, low, in between, I'm experiencing it. And because of that, I see stuff. I can walk down the street and I will see a little bug on the road. I, I will see that the window frame of that building has a new color. I will see the curtain that has a special pattern in it. I will see the bird over there in that tree. Because I'm living in that moment. When you ask me for directions, I can tell you exactly at what house to turn, what the house looks like, what color it has, maybe even what the pub is called. I can tell you all that. Can I tell you the street name? Maybe. If I've driven it often enough, probably. But I can tell you everything that I see when I drive down there. I can even tell you exactly what the building looks like that you need to walk into. Unless, of course, I changed since I've last been there. Because I, I am present when I'm there. Once you're present in that moment, you're living, then life is happening with you. And having that experience creates a rich life for you and for others. So when we're talking about living and existing, 
It's for you. And then what you do will transfer to others. One of my favorite examples, and I hope I haven't said this on this show before. I probably have. I know it's in a number of my books. It's when you have weekly calls. Whether it's with your friend, a loved one, or probably even in business meetings. I mean, why are so many people disengaged in business meetings that happen on a weekly basis? Because nothing new is happening and they have tuned out. They're disengaged. They're not present. And later on, they'll complain that there was another boring meeting. Oh, look. So if that's you, we can talk about how to change those meetings. Okay, we really can. I mean, that's part of what I do. Working with teams to make them more engaged. A lot of our employees are disengaged actively at times. So if you're bringing that home to you, either your business or your life, you may have this, um, you're going to hear me talk about that a lot when you see me speak as well. You may have this one family member that calls you every week let's say a great aunt and she calls you every friday at 10 a.m you know she's calling and you answer every morning friday 10 a.m pick up the phone yes auntie so good to hear you today oh yes and then while auntie is talking what are you doing? Are you listening? And here listening means living. Or are you existing? You're on autopilot and what you're doing is, while she's talking on the phone, you're going through your mail, you may be cooking, you may be exercising, and she is just like running in the back telling you for the 20th time how the last doctor's visit went or about a movie she has seen or an experience she had when she was 20. And your brain is shutting down. You feel a little bad for her. And you're not at all present. And then at the end, you hang up, you say, yes, bye, love you too. Doesn't really mean much at that point, does it? The next Friday, she calls back. She tells you the same story. Why do you think that is? The energy while you were talking on the phone, over here is auntie, and she knows you're not listening because your responses are, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, oh, yeah. And then she hears background noise. Are you listening? Oh, yes, I am. Just just fell down. She knows you're not present. Even if she's hard at hearing and she doesn't hear all the noise you're making in the background, she feels that you're not listening. You're not present. And she loves you and she appreciates that you make the time to, to listen to her because time is the most important gift we can give. But the time that you're giving is half-hearted it's autopilot time and what you're really doing something else or you might be doing three or four things and you're really not doing any of them presently or with focus so who knows what comes out of all of the things that you're doing right and then you can make a choice and you can tell and by the way i have done this you can tell your aunt that you need a little bit of time to figure some things out in your life. And therefore, for the next few weeks, when she calls at 10 a.m. on Friday mornings, you just can't pick up. And you can't pick up because you've got things that you need to deal with. And you know that while you're dealing with those things, you won't be present for her. And you're telling her that she deserves more than you not being present. 
Now, she'll understand. She'll love you for it. And she will call you on Friday at 10 a.m. Because you're both on autopilot. And because you love each other. At that point, you are the one in charge. You told her from a loving point of view that you won't pick up. And that you won't pick up because you love her and you want to be present with her, but you got some stuff. So now, are you going to pick up or not? It's on you. Do you want to continue existing and be in our autopilot? Or do you want to live? One step. I always say freedom is just one step away. It's in my revolutionized book. You now can step towards the phone, pick it up, and go right back into your path. Or you can take one step in the other direction and be present with whatever you do during that time. And yes, she will still call every Friday, every Friday. And every single Friday is up to you. And the first couple of Fridays, it's hard not to pick up that phone. It is. But then, you don't pick up. You're not even tempted. And then, there comes that Tuesday afternoon comes that Tuesday afternoon and suddenly it's like, whoa, I, I wonder how auntie is doing. And you take that one step towards the phone. You pick up the phone by choice. You dial her number. You say, hey, auntie, it's me. I want to check in on you. How you doing? And Andy's like, what, what, you're calling me? You, you want to talk to me? And she's now living, she's getting excited. She's like, oh my gosh, you really wanna, you're present, you're calling me? It's not just our weekly phone call in which you were really most of the time not even listening. And she tells you stuff, maybe the same story, but most likely not the same story. She'll tell you stuff. And you will experience it because now you're present. And in that presence, you both reconnect. You're both living right now. In that moment. And so it may take a somewhat drastic step to tell the other person, I need a break. And that somewhat drastic step because of the routine, because of the patterns, because remember, hidden power patterns, patterns have a lot of power over us, okay? Because of that, it could be considered drastic. And you're taking that one step to freedom, one. One step to freedom. You're taking that. You're taking it, and it has a ripple effect. And you're taking your life back into your own two hands because you're in charge. And however you take that drastic step, it's from love for yourself. Yes, we are allowed to love ourselves. We need to love ourselves. So you're taking that drastic step out of love for yourself and out of love for the other. And they can feel it. It's not like you're picking up the phone and saying, hey, auntie, don't want to talk. Tired and sick of it. But that's not what you're saying. You're explaining it. And you're explaining it because you want to be present and living in that moment that you're talking with your aunt. So take that into a different arena. 
take that back into your job. You may not like your job, I get it. But what is the job doing for you? Are you having an income that you can use to have some fun, to maybe create a beautiful garden outside, go on a trip, buy yourself something nice, go to dinner, whatever it is. Your job makes it possible, right? And the fantastic thing about it is that the job makes it possible, and once you leave the job, it's done. So isn't it great sometimes to have a job and not have to worry about all the other stuff? I mean, as entrepreneurs, we have a whole lot of stuff to worry about, okay? We have a lot more to worry about because we cannot just say, I'm done, okay? When we leave our office, we still have work to do. And I'm in the moment with my cat right now. We have work to do. every time and even as entrepreneurs we have to sometimes say i'm doing this now and that then and we sometimes have to delegate as hard as that is for us entrepreneurs <laughs> because we think we need to manage everything no, we don't we need to manage what we're good at so whether it's at your job whether it's in your personal business whether it's in the team that you're leading whether it's at home or whether it's just with you. You have a choice. You have a choice whether you want to live or exist every single moment. Our moment here on this planet is limited. Wouldn't it be cool to know that you've lived every moment of it? Even if in order to do it, you might have to take some drastic steps back. And I'm saying back because children live in the moment. They live high emotions, low emotions, whatever it is, they live it until we as society train them to exist. And then it just takes one step, maybe drastic, it just takes one step though to regain the experience of living and the experience of life happening with you. So what do you wanna do? There's no right or wrong, but I'm for living. I've lived, I've existed, and I'm living again. And I'm loving my life. I'm loving it because I see everything. And yes, there are some days when I'm tired. There are some days when I'm sad. And there are more days when I'm exhilarated. Why? <laughs> because I'm even exhilarated by the small things. Like the sun peeking out after the rain. I love the rays of the sun when I see them. I, I love how you can see little leaves falling down and dancing. Well, the other day when we were driving, it was pouring down rain. And I could have done what a lot of people do. Oh my God, it's raining. No, no, no. Look at the rain. Have you ever watched raindrops? This is something I've done like forever. <laughs> I even have a poem from when I was probably whatever, like way younger. A teenager, way younger. I wrote a poem about the dancing raindrops because that's what they do. Have you ever seen them dancing up and down? I'm living that moment. I sometimes go outside and dance in the rain. And other people complain about the great clouds. But don't we need rain? Maybe not as much as we're having right now, but you get my point. So let me rephrase the question. Is there a difference between living and existing? Absolutely. Is there right or wrong? Probably not, because I don't believe in right or wrong. 
But you do have a choice. You do have a choice on how your life is going to go from here on forward because all it takes is one step and you can make it. You can take that one step to live every day, to be present and have life happening with you, not to you. Yes, I'm inviting you to stop being a spectator. Live, understand your patterns, get out of autopilot, claim that amazing being that you are and live your life your way. Be you. You can soar to unimaginable heights when you are you. I'd love to help you with it if I can. And if I can't, I know somebody who can. Because yes, the first step sometimes can be a little scary and it's nice to have a little support group pushing you forward. All that is up to you. Right now, I want you to think about this. Because you've started to think about it from the moment that you saw this show was going to come on. And you made it a point to be part of this show. Hopefully, presently so. I hope this was a little helpful to you, and um, I hope to see you back at the next show. Got some more exciting guests coming up. I also invite you, of course, to look at the previous shows if you haven't. And remember to go to the other Transformation TV hosts as well. Because as much as I talk about living and existing and you having a choice, it also is crucial to find your support system. You have to have one. Because we're human beings and we have doubts sometimes. Whenever those doubts come up, I don't want you to go back to exist. I want you to call up a friend, call up a counselor, a coach, a mentor, and say, hey, I'm going through this right now. And let's get it out the way so you can continue living. That's what I want for you. So thank you. Thank you for making the time to be here. I'm honored. You know that I believe time is the most important gift. And I believe that because of my experience. And I give kudos to my mother who taught me that. Time is the most important gift we have in the world. Thank you for your time. I hope it was worth it, and I hope to see you again. And until then, have a revolutionary day, and remember, be you.